Hello, welcome to 1995 Batman.com. Today we are looking at this, which is my uh, album uh, cardboard standee for the Batman Forever uh, soundtrack album. Uh, something I picked up from a fellow collector, uh, something that was used in record stores to advertise the album. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. Obviously, it's just the main kind of poster, but it's kind of cut out, which is pretty cool. Um, and I'm a big fan of the album, so we'll take a little look at some of the albums as well, just to make this video a little bit longer. But I love this poster as well because it, it's obviously advertising all the singers that are on the album, and uh, there's a few uh, spelling mistakes there, uh, like Michael Hutchins spelt wrong. Uh, but my favourite is the Flaming Lips Lips. Yeah, this is like a this is a thing that went out to to you know record stores and stuff, and they left such a glaring. Uh, mistake there that it always amuses me when I look up and see that. Anyway, let's go back and have a little look at some of the uh, albums that I've got from the movie. Okay, so um, first up let's take a look at, let's just take a look at the traditional uh, uh, soundtrack album. This is my one back from 1995, it's looking a bit worn. Uh, yeah, I like this album, I like it a lot and I think, you know, the opinion is, you know, of the 90s soundtrack albums that we had. Uh, this is probably one of the better ones, you know, it's got a good, it's got two great singles, uh, the U2, I'm not a huge U2 fan, but Hold Me Through and We Kiss Me Kill Me is a pretty great song, um, it fits with the film, it doesn't really, you know, comment or anything in the film, but just uh, sonically it just sounds kind of right. Uh, and the other kind of main single is obviously Sealed, Kiss My Rose, which again I think is a really pretty cool song, um, you know, obviously Batman Forever is uh, amped up the romance, as it were, uh, from the previous uh, Burton movies. So I always thought that was pretty cool. Although I did always think it was pretty weird. You know, Kiss from a Rose, surely that should be for, like, Poison Ivy. But anyway, um, let's just have a quick look at the uh, song. So the U2 kind of opens it. It's a pretty cool opening. Um, then you've got PJ Harvey, One Time Too Many. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Brandy, Where Are You Now? Yes, I like this a lot. I like my uh, mid-90s R&B, so that's pretty cool. Seal, Kiss from a Rose, I think it's just... One of the best uh, love ballads. Uh, Massive Attack with Tracy Thorne. Uh, Hunter gets captured by the game. Now, this is a cover, and I can't remember who the original artist is, but it's a really good cover. I really like Massive Attack. I really like Tracy Thorne. Uh, Eddie Reedy, Eddie Reader, No One Lives Without Love. Uh, I could do without that one. Uh, Mazzy Star, Tell Me Now. It's pretty fun. The Offspring, Smash It Up. I love this song. This is another cover uh, of a punk band, and the name's escaping me, but that's pretty cool. Um, Nick Cave, There Is A Light. Uh, I do like that one a lot. Um, it's a pretty dark song. There's uh, there's some lyrics in there about like a shaved hole or something, um, <laughs> which is pretty kind of. I remember thinking that when I was like 11, listening to this album, like shaved hole. Oh my god, is that? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, um, and obviously, kind of narratively, it's one of the few songs on this that actually kind of fits the film. Because uh, I always thought, anyway, the kind of there is a light that shines over the city is kind of like the bat signal and stuff. Uh, Method Man, the Riddler. I'm not into my uh, rap. Uh, I hate that I used to always skip this song uh, as a kid, but I don't mind it now. It's kind of fun, and it does at least uh, kind of tie slightly into the uh, movie. Uh, Michael Hutchins, the Passenger. That's a cover of uh, Iggy Pop. Uh, if you ever heard the Iggy Pop version, it's a pretty cool version. Um, but it's kind of like uh, quite kind of upbeat for Iggy Pop and uh, it's quite kind of like you know jingly jangly uh, this is kind of really dark kind of like cover version I really like that a lot uh, The Devlin's Crossing the River is kind of like very generic middle of the road indie uh, but I still like that uh, Sunny Day Real Estate 8 I think that's one I always skip I can't really even remember it now and I've listened to this album probably going on like 500 times uh, and then finally the Flaming Lips Bad Days which is obviously the song that plays when uh, when Edmund Nigma is going into his little apartment uh, yeah I quite like that none of these you know really featured that much in the film I remember Brandy Brandy's Where Are You Now is when um, kind of Robin's cruising through uh, Gotham uh, in the Batmobile uh, I remember that one and I remember Flaming Lips but I don't think many of the other ones really actually feature I know U2 and Seal are basically just over the end credits um, but anyway, I, all in all, I think it's a pretty cool album. A lot of soundtracks don't really work. They normally have like one or two good songs and then like a whole bunch of bad ones. Uh, but I think the majority, I'd say like 90% of this is pretty good. Uh, and I'll, I'll listen to it anytime. Um, so that's the album. Then you've got the... 
you got the two U2 singles, so you got the one that they gave in the shops, and you got this one, which is a promotional one they gave away with the uh, DC Comics adaptation, which is cool. Uh, you got Seals Kiss from a Rose, which is pretty cool. Um, then you got this. This is something I just found on eBay for a couple of quid. Uh, thought it was a good. Uh, it's the promotional copy that they used to send out to uh, radios, I guess. Uh, it's just like a pink kind of cover, kind of Atlantic branding on it. Um, yeah, for them to play. Um, nothing's different about it, it's just a, a different uh, cover. Uh, and then finally you got the Elliot Goldthorne um, uh, score, as it were. There's two versions of this. There is a more updated version, expanded version. Uh, which has this and additionally like a whole other album worth of uh, just the full score without any editing uh, which is fun but I kind of like this because it's just it's a bit tighter because uh, it's kind of edited down um, this is really good I really like Elliot Goldthorne's uh, theme I know uh, Danny Elfman gets a lot of praise for his Batman theme but I thought Elliot Goldthorne was pretty uh, pretty good so that's all the uh, Batman stuff hope you enjoy my uh, random musings on them. Uh, we'll be back for more merchandise soon. Interesting little side note about uh, U2's song. Um, I've always heard this rumour that Bono was meant to be featured in the film, and I always assumed it was some kind of like misinterpreted fan theory or whatever. But I have actually found confirmation in US magazine, which has the secrets of Batman Forever. I'll scan all this for the uh, for the website. Uh, so there's a bit here, uh, here we go, number 13. Schumacher even considered adding the ro a role to the party scene, the Enigma Tech party scene, for his friend Bono, who would have dressed up in his Mesophistilian incarnation from U2's Zuropa tour. We talked about making him Riddler's sidekick, says Schumacher, but then I decided that when you have the most famous singer, you almost need to stop the movie for four minutes just to let him do his thing. Interesting side note. I'll get this and all of these, because some great um, Chase Meridian uh, costume sketches here and put them up on the website.